Okay, so we've talked about the uh, specific heats of, of ideal gases. Now let's talk about all of this for solids and liquids. So solids and liquids are, are nearly incompressible. Uh, the density, the density and the specific volume are is essentially constant. Uh, if they are incompressible, then they are constant. If they're practically incompressible, then they're practically constant. So that any volume change, there is no, or it is negligible. Any volume change is negligible. So it's not like there's a CV uh, or a CP for solids and liquids. There's just one C value. Now the table might say CP, but but it's 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 there's just one C value um, <clears throat> for solids and liquids for solids and liquids uh, and that is in table A3 table A3 so uh, table A3 if you go to table A3 uh, they'll call it a CP value um, but whether we're finding delta U or delta H um, we can find C delta T, right? We can find C delta T. So here's the C for uh, things like uh, all of these liquids, um, all of these liquids right here. Uh, and then there are some solids on the next page. Yeah, some of these C values. Uh, for different objects, all right? So for solids and liquids, for solids and liquids, then the delta U is C at the average temperature. If we have a, a range of temperatures, um, we probably will only have one temperature value. So just take the C from the table times delta T to get delta U. Capital would be MC delta T, MC delta T. Okay, and so briefly, I'll try not to overcomplicate this or undercomplicate it, but we remember that H is equal to U plus PV. That's just the definition of enthalpy. And so delta H is equal to delta U, and it's almost like uh, taking a derivative and the um, product rule, but uh, it'd be like delta P times V plus P delta V and if this is negligible, we might still have the delta P times V. Uh, many times, this is very, very, very small. And if, you know, if your delta P is not very large, then that term is small as well. Um, so many times, your, your delta H is equal to your delta U. Um, and your delta U could be C. Uh, we'll just say C, delta T. C at the average temperature, T2 minus T1. Uh, but sometimes you might want to correct it with this kind of a correction term uh, if you have a very large change in pressure. So if this is very small or this is very small, then that term is negligible. But you know, if we want to be more precise or if we want to just calculate that just, just to see if it changes much, um, then we can say the delta H is C delta T plus V delta P, right? Plus V delta P. Um, this is similar. Do you remember the equation we briefly had uh, that H is approximately equal to H of the saturated liquid at that temperature? Uh, and then we had this correction factor, V of the saturated liquid at that temperature times P minus P sat. This is kind of similar to this uh, correction factor that many times we neglect it, uh, but if we want to be more precise, we can uh, calculate that right there. The main thing here, the main thing here, for solids and liquids, uh, for solids and liquids, uh, we're probably going to want to calculate delta U, right? We wouldn't calculate delta H because delta H was for a, a boundary, a constant pressure um, problem. Uh, so we're probably going to calculate delta U. How do we calculate delta U? C, delta T. And then here we just kind of 
are, are reintroducing these correction factors if the change in pressure is very, very high. All right, so let's, let's use some problems. And again, this is for solids and liquids. Table A3 is for solids and liquids. Do not, do not, do not use an ideal gas equation for a solid or a liquid. Uh, it seems obvious, but I know in the test you're, you're, you're not thinking. and You've got some equations on your formula sheet that you think you should use or could use. Don't use ideal gas for solids and liquids.